But you've suddenly leapt from uh, sophisticated discussions of the origin of the universe, where one can have a proper discussion about whether um, some sort of cosmic intelligence could have set forth the laws of physics. And you suddenly jump to a man who lived 2,000 years ago, was born of a virgin, rose again from the dead. Uh, well, I only did that I, because you mentioned it well, first I at the beginning. Well, I think that's petty. I think that's petty. Uh, by comparison with the grandeur of the universe. I mean, to, to put my point again, do you really think that the, the creator of this magnificent edifice of the universe, these, the expanding universe, the galaxies, do you really couldn't think of a better way to get rid of the sins on this one little speck of dust than to have himself tortured? He's the one who's doing the forgiving after all. Couldn't he just have forgiven? Because this is a moral universe, Richard, and just forgiving doesn't make sense. I mean, he has to kill himself in order he to... He doesn't kill himself. Or get himself killed, God, tortured. God, God sends his son into the world to provide forgiveness and to provide a basis on which he can justly bring uh, forgiveness to me. Now... He has to get himself killed in order to do well, that. Well, half a minute. We need to step back from this a little bit because it's actually a highly relevant topic. In your world, where is justice, justice to be found? Well, it's a, justice is a human construct of great importance in human affairs, and it's something that we have, most of us have a, a sense of, uh, which I think probably can be given some sort of Darwinian explanation, but I don't see where you're taking this. Well, uh, my question is, is there any ultimate justice? You oh. see, you say this is petty. I'm saying I find myself in a world which is a broken world. I find myself in a world where there's massive injustice, where many people won't get it. We're so privileged. We live in Oxford and so on. We've got enough money to live on, etc., etc. But if there is no God, then there's no ultimate justice. And one of the things that the resurrection transforms for me from pettiness right into center stage is if this is true, then there's real hope that there'd be a rational evaluation and fair justice at the end of the world. But atheism doesn't give you that. Okay, suppose there is no hope, suppose there is no justice, suppose there's nothing but misery and darkness and bleakness, suppose there is nothing that we would wish for, nothing that we would hope for. Too bad. It, that doesn't make it true just because God would make us feel good. Well, of course it doesn't. Well, then why do you make, bring that argument up? Because I believe that there is evidence that it is true. I don't believe in the resurrection just like that, uh, because faith is based on evidence. But I've changed your ground again. What you, what you said before was that there is no hope without God. And it sounded well, that's true. A... That's absolutely true. Okay. And you just admitted it. Uh, so I it... haven't admitted it. I said, if that's true, Yes. So what? I didn't say it was true. But anyway, um, but therefore if that's the question true, so what? to be decided then is is there a god and has he revealed himself? And that's where again I think this pettiness needs to be pushed aside because I can't get to know you as a person. You're not just a scientific object. I can look at you through a, 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 a telescope or a magnifying glass. I could even dissect you and so on and so forth. But because you are a person, I cannot get to know you unless you're prepared to reveal yourself to me. So the fact that the claim of, of Christ to be the truth, to be God incarnate, that makes perfect sense to me because if there is a God who invented this wonderful, marvelous universe with all its science and all the rest, then he has taken the initiative in getting to know us and revealing himself to us. And he's revealed himself to us at the level we can understand. We're persons, he's a person. That at least makes sense. So one of the very important questions to ask is, is that really true? Or is this simply myth and fantasy?